Do you want to learn how to add validations to your Ruby on Rails application? Then stick around to find out how. I'm Thomas with BrainTrust Digital. I'm a full stack developer obsessed with learning. If you're interested in learning full stack web development, please consider subscribing below. I wanted to take a second to say thank you. We recently crossed a thousand subscribers, which is crazy to me. I, I never thought that that would be possible. Uh, when I first started out, I, I thought maybe I could help one or two people with a, a couple of videos. So it's been incredible to watch, you know, the tutorial requests come in and, and as I've slowly been kind of working through those requests to be able to, to feel like I'm really helping some people. Uh, so, so thank you for, for all the participation and, 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 and joining and being a part of this community. With that being said, let's talk validations. First, what are validations? Validations are a way to create precise constraints around the data that enters your database. They're a great way to provide feedback to users in forms because of all the tooling Rails has built around validations. Rails gives you access to several built-in validation helpers to accomplish a wide variety of data constraint needs. And you also have the ability to create completely custom validations if necessary to accomplish any scenario. So we're gonna walk through that entire process. The next thing you might be wondering is how do validations work? Validations run by triggering off of certain methods run against your data. For example, creating new data or updating existing data. But they don't fire on all methods. I'll include a link in the description below to the Rails validation docs. All right, with that out of the way, let's get into the tutorial to learn how to add validations to our Ruby on Rails application. So as you can see, we have our AWS Rails application open and we're in the user.rb or user model file. The first thing I wanted to do was point out a few validations we already have in place. In previous tutorials, we walked through how to add profile pictures using active storage. In that video, we wanted to validate type of files that users could upload to ensure they were uploading imagery only. So in this case, PNGs and JPEGs. Next, you can see another validation where we wanted to ensure both the first name and the last name were present. So in one case, you see us using a content type validation. In another, you see that we're simply validating the presence. So now that you've seen a couple examples that we already have in place, let's go ahead and add some new validations. In this case, we're going to open up app models video.rb. We're going to add a few validations to the video model. Let's quickly look at the database schema so you can quickly see the types of data that we're storing on the videos model. So in our case, videos have a string for the title, a string for the YouTube ID, an integer for position, and then the Rails defaults created at and updated at timestamps. Now that you have an idea of what the data model looks like, let's flip back over to the video file. So here we're gonna add our validations below the pagination, but above the relationships. Order there isn't so important. That's just the convention that I personally standardize on. So paste in the first validation. Here we're gonna validate our title and we're gonna give that a presence of true. What this means is that every video must have a title. So we go ahead and save that. Next, we're gonna add one more set of validations on the YouTube ID string. So we'll paste that in. Here, we're going to validate against the YouTube ID field. The validations we're gonna run are for presence true. So this must be populated. Uniqueness true. Each value passed must be unique across the video's model. And we're also going to validate a format. In this case, this is just a regular expression that happens to align with the format of a YouTube ID. The exact regular expression is not important in this case, just more an example to follow to show how this could be done. And you can use whatever regular expression you may need for your use case. Lastly, you can see the error message that we'll throw if we fail this validation. Must follow YouTube ID format. So let's go ahead and save. Now that we've added our validations, if we attempt to create a new video, but we don't fill out any of the data, you can see our validations in practice. We get three errors. The first is because our title is blank, and the second is because our YouTube ID doesn't follow the correct format and is also blank. Let's go ahead and paste in some content from a previous YouTube tutorial, the one covering the faker gem. Now that we've populated the title, if we click create video, you can see that that title validation is now passing. Obviously, we did not enter any data for the YouTube ID, so those two validations still fail. If for a moment we entered just some arbitrary data, 
ABC and then clicked create video, you can see we passed the presence validation, but we're still not passing that format validation. The one that says this needs to look like a YouTube ID that is 11 characters long and numbers and letters. So if we delete this arbitrary data and then paste in a valid YouTube ID for that code, this will pass that format regular expression. Next, if we just add in position and then click create video, you can see we've successfully passed all of our validations and therefore we're allowed to create this video. Rails has a number of available different types of validations. So I've got the Rails guide here pulled up, but you're gonna to wanna to reference this to see all of the different types and options of validations available to you by default. Don't worry, I'll link this in the description as well. There's such a wide variety of validation helpers available that typically you can find what you need already available via Rails. But what happens when you need to do something custom? But it might be nice to show how to roll your own validation as well as the general practices I use when writing custom validations. So let's flip back over to our application. The first thing I do inside my app folder is I create a new folder. I call this folder validators, and I think that's pretty standard convention, though if there's anyone out there watching this video who creates their own custom validations, I'd love to hear how your practices are the same or different from mine. Now that we have our validators folder, let's create the validation file inside. So now we're gonna go ahead and right click, create new file, we're gonna save this. In my case, I'm gonna call this user validator.rb. This is going to be a simple custom validation that's gonna be applied to our user model. So first let's paste the code in and then we can go ahead and walk through it. So we created a class, the user validator class. You're gonna want this to match your file name. This inherits from active model validator. The next requirement here is that you're going to want to write a validate method that, in, that receives a record. What you do from there is entirely up to you. You can add any number of conditions or additional methods as necessary. Then whatever you define as your error state, you have the ability to add errors on that record with a message. So in our case, we're going to go ahead and validate the full name on the user and ensure that it doesn't contain invalid characters. When setting up this tutorial, I thought I would check for uh, URLs contained in the name, but instead just decided to pivot to just do invalid characters. So let's rename this method really quickly. And instead we'll call it contains invalid characters. So now if our method contains invalid characters that takes in the record's full name is equal to true, we're going to add errors. The error we're gonna add is onto the user, and we're gonna say first name and last name must not contain these special characters. Below you can see the method I've defined. Uh, again, we're doing a regex here, or regular expression. We're bringing in our text and then looking for matches against the characters that are not allowed. If any matches are present, then we're returning true, and therefore adding this error. A quick note about regular expressions, this is not something I've covered in depth, uh, but a great tool here is Rubular. You can use Rubular to build up or test your regular expression. It's just a very convenient tool. So if we go ahead and grab inside the slashes here of our regular expression, and then paste them into Rubular. Here at the top, this is where you paste your expression. Below, you can paste test strings. So let's go ahead and paste a lot of test data containing several of these invalid characters. As you can see on the right, we get the various match results. So in our case, all of these test strings would be prevented. If we instead add a test string that was valid, or rather a valid name, according to this regular expression, you can see it does not highlight, and therefore is not a match, would be allowed to proceed. So Bear can sign up for our website. Rubular is just a great resource for testing and building up your Ruby regular expressions. There's also a great reference at the bottom with common regex syntax. I'll link Rubular in the show notes as well, so you can check that out as a great reference. Now that we've created our user validator, we need to tell our user model that it should be using this new custom validation. Here in the user model file, let's go ahead and enter below the previous validation. Instead of validates this time, we're using the validates with, and then we pass in the name of our validator, user validator. We flip over to the browser and log out of our user and then click the sign up button. So if we put a name with one of our invalid characters, fill in some dummy data, and then click sign up, you can see our error using the error message we defined. User first name, last name must not contain special characters. And then the list of characters that we're excluding. If we replace this special character, 
with a valid character and then attempt to submit, you can see that we will pass validations. As you can see, we were able to create that user now that we're no longer using any of the invalid characters. At this point, now that you can see everything is working as we'd expect, this is when I would typically commit our code to source control, that is GitHub, and then merge and deploy our code using Capistrano. Finally, I typically prove in production that the code is functional. I've heard in the comment section from a couple users that this portion of the video tends to get a bit repetitive and I can have shorter videos as a result. So in this video, we're testing that theory. We are not going to merge and deploy. Uh, let me know if you like this style in the comment section below. If you'd like to see that full process that is committing and deploying our code and then proving it live in production. If not, that's okay too. Just let me know what you think. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, if you consider liking and subscribing, or perhaps even sharing with a friend who you think may be interested in this type of content, I'd really appreciate it. And with that, I'll catch you in the next AWS Rails tutorial.